What messed up thing did your school do? The mock car crash just before prom was kind of fucked. You never knew what day it was on. It was a surprise. None of the students involved were allowed to tell their friends or anything. It hit me really hard for three reasons. My best friend was one of the students picked to be dead, and for the crash, she was covered in blood and had a windshield wiper sticking out of her. My cousin, who I was fond of, had just recently died in a car accident where he was practically beheaded. I dropped acid that morning. Every hour, so many students would be pulled from class and told to put on a black sweatshirt, and they were dead. This represented how many people die every hour in a drunk driving accident. These students couldn't talk to you, they were like ghosts. I was tripping balls, and it was a bad day. As a fundraiser last year my school played what does the fox say for a week over the pass system during passing periods. You could pay to stop the song and they were going to stop it once they met their goal. Doesn't seem too awful at first. But throughout the week they made the song progressively louder, and by the middle of the week they had dropped the words in the song, and were just playing the ding 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 at obnoxiously loud volumes. Teachers started to disconnect their pass systems in their rooms, students were complaining of migraines, everyone was just super pissy about the situation, you'd think the lesson was learned, but they did same goddamned fundraiser this year. Got where to begin with the fundamentalist Christian schools. Sex Ed for the Girls was a one hour session about how premarital sex is a sin, and that your husband will teach you everything you need to know about sex. Girls got expelled for getting pregnant, boys didn't get expelled for participating in the conception. If your skirt or shorts were of questionable length, you had to go kneel down in the principal's office, so he could use a ruler to measure the clearance of the hem from the floor. 4 inches from the floor, when kneeling was the rule, for some reason. Girls were taught that they could never be in a position of power over men. Women could lead ladies groups or children, but could never be the boss of a man, either in a church or work setting. Looking back after all these years, there really is a ridiculous list of these sorts of things that I remember from this particular school. And growing up with that being your normal, you don't realize how fucked up it is until much later. On every Tuesday, all the students went to the auditorium for an hour or so. There we had assemblers and general discussions. Nothing out of the ordinary. But, there used to be the segment where all the students had to sing the happy birthday song, and also do a dance. Yes, a dance. It was like Greece, but just a lot more worse. We would point our arms up and down, and then towards the guy who had his slash her birthday. The weird part was we had to do the dance even when there were no birthdays. TL, Dr. School made us do a birthday song and dance, even when it wasn't anyone's birthday. Edit, kids would avoid going to school on purpose, on the day of their birth. It was so that the crowd would have to sing to an empty stage. No nationwide scandals, just the hiring of a terrible person. There was a school counselor who worked with special ed students who should have been fired, but he probably messed up an entire generation of kids. I had an IEP that stated that I was allowed to leave the classroom at any time, to sit in the EBD, emotional slash behavioral disorders, at anxiety, Asperger's, etc. Room if I had a panic attack, other than a 45 minimum. Study hall, I was in all mainstream classes, but each person on an IEP had to visit this counselor and his assistant for career planning once a week. I knew I wanted to go to a university, rather than a trade school. Nothing wrong with trade schools, they just didn't have the major I wanted. The counselor refused to give me any information slash applications, before that was all done online, telling me that the best I could hope for was to be committed to a good institution, because I was too unstable to live on my own or ever have a fulfilling relationship. None of the kids in my study hall went on to any post high school education, despite some of them being far more high functioning than me, and in better off families. I'm convinced he crushed their dreams. I'm almost done though. It took a year and a half longer than normal, but I'm graduating in a month. Update. Looked up my old school webpage. He's still there. How unfortunate. Junior high. Students were locked into the lunch area during lunch period to prevent students roaming the halls. I didn't realize how dangerous it was. E. G. In case of fire, until one day some kid poured super glue in one of the locks as a prank and everyone started to get claustrophobic and freak out. 
they took the doors off the bathroom stalls. They thought we were going to drugs, if we had privacy. So yeah no, shit in front of everyone. That's fun. Also, this was only in the boys room, if I remember correctly the girls said all their stalls had doors. During the national app exams, there was a really big case where this girl cheated on one of the exams. She literally wrote notes on her arms, and covered it with her sleeves. Probably one of the most idiotic things I ever heard, and what's more surprising, is that she's president of numerous academic slash community service organizations. Girl like that should be smarter. Anyway, the whole school was at risk of getting all the students app scores cancelled, and potentially be the joke of all the school district. So, the board members of the school paid some hush money to the right people so news wouldn't go past the school gates. The girl got away with a slap on the wrists, everyone's scores were safe, and the college board never heard of the news. Talk about extremely shady. When I was in elementary school they didn't have ice, in school suspension, but I was so misbehaved they couldn't keep me in the classroom. So they cleaned out a janitor closet, and put a desk in it, and locked me in. Every 30 minutes a different teacher would come check on me then lock the door again. At the time I didn't realize how bad this was. What if there was a fire? What if I had to use the bathroom, and no teacher was around? Shit's fucked up. Before I describe what actually happened, I need to explain something about weeples. Weeples are, or were, at the very least, these little balls of fluff about the size of golf balls. They are often festooned with googly eyes, hats, plastic feet, or any number of other accessories, making them look rather like a crafting project undertaken by a group of 5 year olds. Weeples were fairly coveted items when I was in 6th and 7th grade because you could earn them as a reward for selling magazine subscriptions through this fundraising event that the school held every year. And if you had the right Weeples, you actually had the chance to win a fair amount of money in one of the daily contests. If none of this is making much sense, don't worry, it was difficult to understand back then, as well. Basically, you'd get different varieties of Weeples for selling different amounts of magazine subscriptions. Then, every day, each Weeple bearing student would be allowed to pull a piece of candy out of a hat. If the candy had a sticker on it, the student would win a certain amount of money. That amount would be multiplied by each Weeple that they owned, plus an additional multiplier for. Okay, you know what? None of this is important. What is important is that certain members of the school faculty viewed this entire event as a way threatening or bribing some of the students. There was one young woman, for instance, who was told that she'd be set up to win $50 if she gave up her spot in some contest or another so that the teacher's son could take her place. Another student was told that his winnings would be confiscated if he didn't take responsibility for the fire alarm having been pulled. Nothing really terrible happened, at least, nothing that I heard about, but there were enough shady dealings to make the entire thing seem pretty damned unpleasant, even for those of us who weren't really involved. The twisted punk line to the whole affair came about when one student offered another a sexual favor in exchange for his weeples. And when folks found about about the deal, only he was suspended. Not, as you might think, because of his involvement in the exchange, but because it was explicitly against the fundraiser's rules to share or give away weeples. In high school, I had an extremely deceptive asshole of a boyfriend. I still can't tell you what kind of person he was, because everything he ever said was a lie. But I wasn't aware of that at the time, and I was so happy to find someone so similar to me. Another thing to note, I was not into drugs, and didn't really hang out with those that did. Not that I had an issue with it, but my mother and her boyfriend kept me under constant surveillance and would have made my life a living hell, if I or my friends did. Well, I get to school one day and I'm called to the dean's office. Apparently, my boyfriend has been selling drugs on school property. They have several witnesses but no evidence, but I do believe it was definitely possible. So obviously, I'm 100% without a doubt selling them as well. They suspended me, despite my ignorance to the whole thing. They called my mother, and told her that, if he's doing it, I'm definitely selling and using too, and suggested having me tested. So life at home was awesome thanks to that. They also kicked me out of art class, when they suspected I was guilty of vandalizing the studio along with other people's artwork. They told everyone I did it, 
I was proven innocent. They found the hundreds of dollars worth of stolen supplies used in the crime in some other arsehole's locker, but they never cleared my name. All my artwork was ruined by other students the rest of the year, and no one was punished for that. Aside from all that, they ignored me being bullied constantly. And the bullying wasn't always as bad as how badly I was treated by the administration. Those were easily the worst four years of my life. I attended a conservative Catholic high school during 10th grade. I had a compulsory class about marriage, which had a book called 147 Questions About Marriage. It basically a manual to become a submissive breeder wife. It was an all girls academy, so they were teaching us about how to become a wife, even though we barely knew other boys. Not really cared about here, but I thought it was fucked. Girl killed herself. Not very attractive. Not popular. Bullied and couldn't take it anymore. Got a small plaque put in a hallway with some song lyrics. Boy accidentally killed himself. Attractive. Popular. A bit of a douche. Cousin had a loaded shotgun in the back of his truck. Kid hit it. Got shot in the head. A kind of large plaque put up in the same hallway. B.O. from his a bit in song lyrics. Let his locker door be written on and let people write inside it. This boy made a stupid mistake sitting with a fucking loading gun next to him. Gets a bunch of praise and remembrance. The girl couldn't take the bullying and killed herself. She was barely remembered besides as a name on the wall. This wasn't my school, but my school's main rival, I goose that's what you would call it, tried to ban the color red. Like flat out no red. Shirts, buttons, hair. I shit you not, if your hair was a little too red, even if I was natural try would punish you. They didn't ban the color blue, so I'm pretty sure their school was run by the Crips. <laughs> Ruined the school cafeteria. Freshman year had decent, wholesome food for lunch. By the end of the year, it was the exact same fucking shit every day. The cafeteria was basically where you met up to go off campus to get food. Really sucked for the disenfranchised kids who were forced to eat the free meal for lunch. Spent 14 million dollars swapping the entire district out to Apple everything. Even Apple servers. Then they bought a massive swimming complex nobody ever uses. Then guess what? Time for budget cuts. The new IT director made everybody go back to PCS. Smart boards. A few posters below reminded me of this. It was a failed program at our school. The teachers all but abandoned them because the driver software was shit and the support was non-existent. Turns out a whiteboard is all you need. In my senior year of high school I was suspended for 3 days for tweeting about how I didn't like a teacher's method of teaching. The teacher just so happened to find that tweet on the internet one day, so the school took action and made an example out of me. The teacher was a brand new teacher and was a psychopath. She stalked all of the students on social media. During my senior year in high school, our soccer team played against an out of town school with mostly Hispanic players. At the end of the game, when we won, students from my high school started throwing homemade green cards onto the field and cursing the other team's players. After investigating the incident, we found out that the guys who made the cards were in the same class together and the teacher was fully aware of them making the cards in her classroom. Because of it, the kids were suspended, and the teacher was fired. Even though it wasn't technically my high school itself that caused the riot, the event still made national news as the green card incident. So occasionally, when people ask which high school I went to, I frequently get, oh yeah, you went to that racist high school with the green card incident.